Hello, everyone. Thank you for viewing the City of Beaumont's Our Connectivity Transportation Master Plan Close the Loop Engagement video that we're completing um, for the June 2020 Close the Loop Engagement that we're doing. Um, we really appreciate that you've joined us and we'll be running through the focus of this presentation and then the materials following. But just to provide a brief overview of what Close the Loop Engagement is about is we're representing the previous engagement themes that we've heard from the public and ensuring that these themes are now reflected in the plan that we now have in front of us. So it's a check-in with the public to make sure that we heard you out correctly and that we're following through with the community's original vision of the plan. So brief inter introductions. Uh, my name is Stephen Rates. I'm a municipal planning intern with the City of Beaumont and have been a part of the working group that's brought the transportation master plan to completion over the last little while. And I'll allow my other, pre uh, other presenters to introduce themselves as well. My name is Yasmin Sharp. I'm a long range planner for the City of Beaumont and also part of the internal working group. And I'm Emily Sangster, also a long range planner with the City of Beaumont and, and part of the working group. So I'll let Yasmin take the first half of the presentation and then we'll have Emily be presenting the second half and we'll go over some of the questions and answers we heard from the live streams at the end. Just an overview of what we'll cover today, uh, as Stephen mentioned. The aim of this engagement session is to review the purpose of the transportation master plan and how it was developed with particular attention on the engagement process. We'll go through what the next steps are for the plan and then end with that opportunity for comments, questions and answers. The full presentation and um, engagement session will be around 30 minutes, about 15 minutes for the presentation and then the rest of our time for those questions and answers. So what is the transportation master plan? It's a high level document that provides strategic planning for the transportation system, meaning that it doesn't necessarily identify specific improvements to be undertaken or exactly how new streets should be built. Instead, the plan provides a vision, goals, objectives and policies to guide how the transportation system is expanded and redeveloped. So our connectivity provides strategic planning for many different areas, but some to highlight are roadways and bus routes, sidewalks and trails, intersections and more. So briefly, I'll just provide an example of the scope of the direction that's provided in a plan like this. One of the policies in our connectivity states that the city should ensure strong connections by filling existing gaps in the multi-use trail and sidewalk, sidewalk network, particularly between typical origins and destinations. So examples of that would be schools, commercial areas, parks, essentially anywhere that people frequent. This type of direction can be used to help the city plan trails and sidewalks in new neighborhoods, uh, decide how roadways or park spaces are redeveloped in existing neighborhoods, and it can also be used to help set infrastructure and budget priorities. So the policies and objectives of the plan are organized by three different modes of transportation, which many of us have used in different combinations likely throughout our lives. The first is active modes, which most often refers to walking and cycling, but also covers people using mobility devices like wheelchairs, rollerblading, skateboarding, anything that's really human powered. The second category is transit, and then the third one is private and commercial vehicles, which includes your personal vehicle, and then the commercial vehicles is kind of those larger trucks that bring goods and services in and out of a community. So the vision, goals, objectives, and policies of the plan are intended to help guide the redevelopment of mature or existing neighborhoods, guide the expansion of the transportation system in newly uh, new neighborhoods, especially the recently annexed areas, which is shown in blue and on the west end of Beaumont in that middle picture, and then also to align with regional plans and initiatives that Beaumont is a part of. So this is just an overview of how the plan is organized. It's in seven sections. The introduction covers our connectivity's alignment with higher level plans and how the transportation master plan was prepared. The strategic framework establishes the design approach. 
provides an analysis of trends and innovations in transportation planning that were considered when the plan was being prepared. It reviews Beaumont's current transportation context and then also presents the vision and goals for the future of our transportation system. As we mentioned already, the objectives and policies are organized according to those three modes, which you'll see reflected in sections three, four, and five, vehicle movement, active transportation, and transit. Finally, the implementation plan identifies what further work needs to be completed in order to realize the vision of the transportation master plan. This includes further developing the policy and regulatory framework and also creating more specific plans, budgets and timelines for projects that will help to redevelop, expand and maintain the system. And then finally, the map section holds all of the maps that are referenced in the previous six sections. So what went into developing the transportation master plan? There's kind of three broad elements that go into it. The first is public engagement, which we'll go into more detail in the following slides. The second is industry best practices. So what transportation planners and engineers from around the world and the region have learned about developing strong transportation systems as well as internal practices and design standards that Beaumont was already integrating. And then the third element is existing policy direction. One of the most important ones is the municipal development plan which guides all strategic plans within the city as well as the social master plan, the recreation master plan and Beaumont strategic plan. As well Beaumont is a member of a regional board therefore there's regional policy direction that we strive to align ourselves with a one is indicated you can see in orange is the irtmp which stands for the integrated regional transportation master plan and also we're part of the regional transit service commission so this project history focuses on the engagement aspect of um, the project yeah, between 2016 and 2017, the plan was developed alongside the municipal development plan with lots of different opportunities for input for stakeholders and the public. You'll see in that timeline, there were some uh, more informal engagement opportunities where people visiting different areas of the city had the opportunity to, sh to share their input on transportation uh, master plan, as well as some more focused um, work that was done in a workshop setting. It's also too important to note that other plans that were developed at the same time, so for example, the recreation master plan, if there was any themes that emerged through that engagement that was relevant to transportation master uh, plan, then it was shared and it was taken into consideration, even if it wasn't strictly a part of the TMP um, engagement process. Between 2018 and 2019, the plan was refined based on the outcomes of that engagement, feedback from council, that research on best practices, and policy direction from other municipal strategic planning documents. The longer timeline, uh, especially between those years, was because the municipal development plan finalization and approval had to take priority. Uh, Municipal development plans are a required planning document that all municipalities in Alberta are required to adopt. Therefore, there was a period of time where that took priority and the transportation master plan briefly took a backseat. In 2020, the review really focused on bringing the plan up to date and make sure, making sure that any policies that had been adopted were reflected in the current version of the transportation master plan, making sure that there was a consistent level of direction, making sure the objectives were measurable and the policies were truly actionable, and then also increasing the user friendliness of the document. So now I'll pass on um, the presentation to Emily who will focus on what the engagement themes were that came out of the process and how that's reflected in the plan. Okay. Thank you, Yasmin. Um, as she mentioned, I will take a few minutes to talk about some of the high level themes that, um, that arose from the engagement process. Uh, I'll preface this by noting again that this is a high level strategic plan to guide decision making and it doesn't dictate particular decisions being made at particular locations. And so the engagement themes reflect that in that they are high level as well. 
So there are three main themes that I will mention at this moment. Uh, the first one being, uh, we heard quite clearly that people were interested in ensuring that there were safe streets for all throughout Beaumont. So all users of the transportation system, regardless of the mode that they are using, whether that's driving, transit, walking, cycling, other active modes, should be safe when they're using the system. We also heard that people were interested in transportation choices, um, meaning that residents and visitors should have true and realistic transportation options for getting around the community, uh, regardless of the mode that they're using. And that extends to users with different comfort levels and different abilities um, in various modes. So for example, if you are a very confident cyclist or if you're a very new cyclist, um, you should have options for using that mode in Beaumont. And finally, regional connections. It's very important. Um, Beaumont's a great place. There are many wonderful things here, but it's vital for residents and visitors to have a transportation system that offers strong connections to other destinations in the region as well. So we'll move to um, talk a bit further about safe streets for all users. This theme comes up in a variety of places in the document, um, most strongly in the overall TMP design approach that we've taken. Um, we've chosen an approach that is informed by complete streets concepts. Uh, complete streets is a design philosophy that considers the needs of all modes explicitly in the context of surrounding, surrounding land uses when designing transportation facilities. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that all modes are accommodated in all places, but it means that they are expressly considered. So for example, a main street with a variety of shop fronts and other uses might place a higher priority on um, making sure that transit and active transportation infrastructure is in place, uh, whereas uh, an arterial, arter arterial road or an industrial road um, might prioritize vehicle movement more strongly and potentially not include explicit um, active transportation facilities. This is supported by a couple of design considerations, first of which is the 880 principle. So if a street is safe for an eight-year-old or an 80-year-old, it's quite likely to be safe for all ages. Uh, there's also the pedestrian prioritized consideration, so which holds that if a street is safe for pedestrians, it will probably be generally safe for all modes as well. So this theme is reflected in policies for all three modes. Uh, in the vehicle movement section, it's reflected in policies for access management, so how you get from a roadway to a private land use. Um, we've got policies to think about how we want to manage um, the effectiveness and the safety of those accesses and driveways. We have policies reflecting roadway classifications, considering how different users can be accommodated on different types of roads, um, from local roads through collectors, arterials, right up to highways. We've got policies regarding speed limits and also policies regarding how we best balance the movement of goods and service vehicles with other users and traffic impacts. And then in the active transportation section, um, there are policies regarding building complete networks, uh, which means that we want to make sure that we build safe and reliable infrastructure for all users that have a comprehensive set of route choices throughout the community. So there are lots of different routes you could take to get from point A to point B, regardless of the mode that you're using. We've got policies to plan for all users. So this is in the vein of the 880 principle and the, complete, uh, the pedestrian prioritized principle noted above to make sure that our facilities are safe and welcoming for all ages and abilities. And the specific policies at intersections as well, because these are where different modes often come into contact and we can facilitate a safer experience for our most vulnerable road users. So theme of providing transportation choices. For us in developing this plan, providing choices meant making transportation options truly feasible in that they are safe, they're comfortable, and they are convenient. So in the vehicle movement section, um, again, policies related to roadway classification. Uh, these encourage building redundancy into the roadway network to make sure there are multiple ways to get to the same destination. Uh, this can increase route choices and can also reduce congestion and infrastructure requirements when traffic is a bit more distributed throughout the network. Uh, we've also got policies related to parking, recognizing that we quite often oversupply what parking is needed in Beaumont, and so there is room for resources in this area to be redirected to provide better value for the community in other ways. Active transportation, uh, we've taken into consideration development patterns and recognize that the way that we build the community and plan for um, various modes impacts the feasibility of active transportation. So for example, if you have a slightly higher density or greater mix of land uses and you plan for those connections from the get-go, it's going to make walking and biking and rolling and rollerblading and all those active modes much easier choices than they might be otherwise. And to make uh, cycling in particular an easier choice, we have some policy to encourage 
end of trip facilities such as um, bike lockers and change stations just to support, um, to provide the infra infrastructure to support that choice as well. And for transit, there are many factors that support transit use and make providing it more feasible. Um, for example, we've got policies related to encouraging a density and mix of land uses that can support um, a wide variety of people using transit within a smaller area. Um, and we've got policies to, to support local transit connections and regional transit connections that expand as the city grows and as ridership increases to provide people with more comprehensive and accessible transit options. And finally, regional connections. This is another relevant theme for all three modes. So it's found in all three mode sections as well. Uh, it's pretty similar in all three of them, basically emphasizing that which important destinations in our region there are um, and making sure that we have policies to improve connections and transportation choices to all of them. So that would mean neighboring municipalities, but also um, the airport, making sure that we have transit uh, vehicle and potentially active options to get to those places. So our next steps in developing and finalizing the transportation master plan. Uh, as you know, we are completing a public engagement process uh, that includes circulation to external agencies such as utilities and school boards. And we've also completed a circulation to um, regional partners such as adjacent municipalities, the Edmonton Metropolitan Region Board, and Alberta Transportation. And so all the comments that we received during this time, including from the public, are, will be considered as we prepare the final plan for council approval. As I mentioned before, the contents of the transportation master plan have been shaped by the feedback that we received through the engagement process. Uh, the policy direction that has been adopted in higher level plans and findings that we have on best practices for transportation planning. It's important to note that while resident feedback is very valuable in developing and finalizing the plan, it's not possible for every specific comment to be reflected in the final document, but in a lot of cases, the feedback provided can be used at a different scale. So for example, the redevelopment design for a specific street um, or the principle of the common can be reflected in the plan. So once the plan is approved by council, decisions on how to expand and redevelop Beaumont's transportation system will need to reflect the vision and the policies that it contains. This plan is also going to be reviewed periodically to make sure that its contents reflect the evolving nature of transportation planning. So with that, I will pass it back to Stephen to talk a little bit more about where you can find information and uh, wrap us up with a few questions. Yes, so we've provided the links to the website, the City of Beaumont website that has all the engagement information for the Transportation Master Plan here. And then within that website as well, we also have a SurveyMonkey link where we're garnering feedback from the public about closing the loop and seeing if what we've engaged on in the past reflects what's in the plan now. Um, so we encourage you to check out those resources, utilize them and share them with your friends, your family, your neighbors, people who live in Beaumont, just to make sure that we are getting the word out there and uh, completing as a reflective engagement process as possible. Now we'll go into some questions and answers that we've heard so so far from the engagement that we've done through the live streams or for the through the surveys um, first question we'll tackle um, we had people asking do we really need a plan around this sort of thing should we be uh, developing policy for this and to answer that most municipalities do have a transportation master plan um, and it's a norm for the reason that it allows us to effectively build our transportation system in a way that reflects the community values. Um, it allows us to be more strategic about things, allows us to follow the best practices um, when we're working with those who build and develop the community because the city isn't um, the one solely building out all the roads. Um, we work with the development community to do that. So this allows us to have a more uniform, uniform approach to things. Um, Another question that we had uh, was around timelines. Um, when will regional connections be increased for transit and established for active transportation? The idea of like multi-use trail connections between the city of Beaumont to the city of Edmonton or throughout Leduc County to other uh, regional destinations. And um, we don't have specific timelines on this. Like we've said, this is a high level strategic plan. Um, but this work is being moved forward on through um, the city of Beaumont's participation currently in the Regional Transit Services, Services Commission, um, which looks to um, further develop, expand regional connections um, for transit. Um, 
to places like the airport, to places like neighboring municipalities. Um, so this is these are things being moved forward on, but not strictly occurring at a certain date at this point in time, as you know stated by the plan. Um, with active transportation connections, um, those are usually those will fall in line with as development occurs in that area. Um, we'll work with the development community to be establishing those sorts of connections and may be able to uh, work on those projects collaboratively with other municipalities to make sure that when we build a multi-use trail to the city of Edmonton, there's one coming from the city of Edmonton to meet our connection and kind of bridge that gap. Um, so some explanation there around timelines, no definitive answers, of course, because this is a high level strategic plan. Um, another question that we had uh, that came in from the survey was um, how is this plan discussing senior friendly alternatives? Um, and so we, uh, to answer that, we can go back to the 880 design principle, um, that idea of we should be building a transportation system where the infrastructure we're building is safe for those that are eight years old to 80 years old. It doesn't really matter what age you are, you can safely, comfortably, conveniently navigate the system. So it's really not even about providing an alternative for seniors, it's just ensuring that the system we build uh, is able to work for everybody. Um, so hopefully that does a good job of explaining that. And if you want some specific um, points where this comes up in the policy, policy 4.2 sort of um, directly, or not sort of directly, but directly states that um, we're going to be building our active transportation system or sidewalks or multi-use trails using that pedestrian prioritized principle and uh, the 880 uh, design consideration as well. And one final question we'll go over. Um, we had a question come in from the live stream about why uh, transit is envisioned to shift um, its connection point into the city of Edmonton from Century Park to uh, the mill, eventual Mill Woods um, LRT station. And so um, this has always been the plan from the initiation of transit between Beaumont to uh, Edmonton. Uh, the Century Park location was a uh, temporary sort of spot that we would be connecting to until the Mill Woods, uh, that Southeast Valley line uh, would be completed. Um, this connection would allow us to cut down the journey time between Beaumont to the city of Edmonton and may allow us to expand our local transit offerings. Um, and then there's also, we do recognize that that does change the commute for some people who currently use us like Beaumont Transit. Um, so we do have policy direction within the plan that's focused on providing better regional connections so that when you're making that regional trip between Beaumont to Edmonton, we, you may be taking a bus between Beaumont to Edmonton, and then you may hop on the LRT at the Millwood station, take that northwards, but then also be able to access uh, better regional connections within the city of Edmonton to be hopping off the LRT at one point to connect to another part of the system and either be facing a similar sort of journey time as you, you might now be facing now if you were to connect at Century Park um, or an even improved uh, journey time overall. Um, so of course, uh, those are the questions that we've heard so far, but if you do have any additional questions, you can see that my uh, the email available on the website, or you're able to use that phone number to connect um, with me specifically, and I'll be able to relay any questions and um, answer them for you, provide, them with, provide you with more information. Um, like I stated earlier, we would really appreciate if you share that uh, this engagement opportunity with your friends, your family, your neighbors, just to make sure that we're uh, widely engaged in the community as possible. Um, and so without anything further to add, I think we'll close this video. Um, and we really appreciate your time today. Thank you.